Hey, this is Kyle, and today we're going to be looking at if uh, cell phone boosters are uh, useful or not. So today we're going to be looking at my High Boost 4K Smart Link booster, and this has a outdoor antenna. So this is the inside booster, and as you can see, this cord uh, runs to the outside. So you can see that runs outside, and then I have on this side it runs to the interior booster. So let's go take a look at the outside. So this is just for uh, testing purposes. So I have it mounted um, on something already existing before I drill any holes. So you can see the cable runs through the side and down into the house. So, I do have that booster placed outside, and it is aiming towards the closest cell tower, which is about four miles um, that direction. So, let's go ahead and plug in the booster and see if anything changes. And before we plug it in, let's take a baseline test. So, you can see there are two bars of uh, LTE, which is now one bar of 5G. We'll run a speed test. And this is on the Verizon network, or uh, Visible, which is owned by Verizon. And you can see it's switching between that LTE and 5G uh, connection. It's very unstable. I can hardly send a text when I'm inside the house. So you can see it's just spinning in circles on connecting, which usually means that it actually is not connected to the internet. So error, can't reach, uh, speed test, check your internet connection, and try again. So prior to installing uh, the booster, I was actually not able to even send texts, answer calls, or anything inside of my house. So let's go ahead and plug in the booster. So. As you recall, this is going to the outside um, antenna that I just showed, and then this is going to the inside booster that is mounted up in that right corner. So you can see on the LTE 700 band, um, it has 8 dBm of power. On the cell 1800 band, it has 0 of power, which means um, not a great signal. 9 or 10 is an awesome signal. So PCS 1900 shows 9 and then AWS 2100 band shows 6 dBm of power. So HiBoost actually has an app on the phone, and it's called Signal Supervisor. So I have already set this device up, and it's showing um, those two bands, that PCS 1900 and the AWS 2100 bands, um, are very good. And then the LTE band right there um, is showing negative 6 dBm and negative 11, so not strong. Again, this antenna placement could be um, a lot better and aimed better once I actually um, connect it into the house and I can actually properly aim it. It's just in a temporary spot. But you see full bars of 5G ultra wide band, and that means um, that I have Verizon's best signal. So not even just LTE um, or 5G, but their 5G ultra wideband connection. And I'm assuming um, that it's the AWS 2100 because again, those other signals are weak and this I believe is T-Mobile. So if I had this device uh, placed outside just a little better, uh, the antenna, we may even get um, better results than we are seeing. But let's go ahead and run a speed test now. So we just close that, open speed test, and click go. So you can see immediately visible iPhone 13 Pro connected to Verizon and Phoenix. And wow, five full bars of 5G ultra wideband, and you're seeing um, 25 to 30 megabits per second download. and 15 to 20 upload.
that is just incredible because we had, remember, nothing. We had absolutely zero bars before we plugged this in. So it's grabbing the signal from outside via that antenna that we have plugged in here. And then uh, this is going to the booster, which is boosting the signal to the inside of the house where you see these full bars of 5G ultra wideband as we're standing um, pretty close. We're within 10 feet of that booster that's mounted in the upper right corner. So we can see these results are incredible. I now have signal in my house. I can place calls, I can text reliably, and I actually have internet inside the house. So I can use, uh, I don't just have to use my Wi-Fi. If my Wi-Fi goes down for whatever reason, I'm now able to get a cell signal of 5G ultra wideband. So that's this very stable um, connection, as you can see. And you can remotely monitor uh, your cell booster anytime. And you can, um, in this more in edit, you can actually send uh, have it send you an email if any of these go into alarm status from normal. So if it drops the signal altogether, you can actually have it send you an email and a push notification on your phone saying, hey, check your antenna, there's something wrong uh, with your, your cell booster. But I have been getting absolutely phenomenal results with this using it this week. I've been able to actually um, send text, utilize internet, and call people. I've been able to receive calls, voicemails, and um, have outgoing calls with absolutely no issues where I was not able to before. So let's switch devices and let's take a look at T-Mobile. All right, now we are on a T-Mobile device, and this is a uh, Galaxy S20 FE 5G. So you can see that we do have uh, 5G, and it's showing negative 113 to negative uh, um, 111, now negative 118, 116. Uh, so it's a very unreliable um, cell signal. So we'll go ahead and run a speed test. And you can see it's showing uh, one bar. And it's connecting, it's doing the same thing, finding provider, finding server, and it's actually unable to do anything uh, with the signal that it is seeing. Error test failed to complete. Please check your connection and try again. So now let's go ahead and same with the Verizon. We will go ahead and plug the booster in. You can see it's initializing. And once it's on, you see the, um, the power levels of all of the bands. And you can see Instantly, this phone is now showing almost full bars, and it's showing a negative 87, um, 89. I've even seen negative 75 uh, dBm. And the lower number in the negatives, the better. So negative 65 would be an amazing cell signal. Negative 105 is virtually unusable service as we could tell we couldn't even run a speed test when we were at uh, negative 115 so you have full bars showing and now let's go ahead and run a speed test so now is it is showing uh, t-mobile us very quick we just go ahead and click go to run that speed test And it's not uh, super fast, but there was zero bars before and absolutely no internet. It was non-functioning. So I will take 12 megabits per second um, download. Now where T-Mobile does struggle, and again, I could uh, move that antenna 
and maybe it'll pick up um, a better signal is in this upload speed. So we have virtually no upload speed um, because the jitter is so wide with that T-Mobile. So you can see um, the latency is not good. Packet loss is huge. But it is actually signal. So um, once I actually place the booster in a better location and get it mounted to the house, it might actually even get better. So let's go ahead and look at the app on the phone for the signal supervisor. So I'm just going to go to me and I'm going to sign in real quick. And cell booster. You see it. And you see um, all of the powers. So it says that we are in super for LTE 700, we're in super connection strength for uh, the PCS 1900, and we're also in super strength for AWS 2100. So it looks like I'm in actually a pretty okay spot, minus this cell 800, which is uh, changing quite a bit from negative one to negative three. But all of these are a stable um, seven to 10. So yeah, I do believe that a cell booster in Arizona, in my use case, was super, super helpful to have. All right, thanks for watching the video and please comment if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching.